Let's get one thing straight. Going into this video, I don't want you to listen to anyone else but you. Your spiritual journey is about you and you only. It's not about what I tell you. It's not about what society tells you. It's not about what your family tells you. It's your own journey to find what resonates with you and what makes you find peace and fulfillment. beautiful lotus flowers welcome back or welcome to my channel if you're into nerding now on everything astrology spirituality and self transformation this is the community for you we're gonna start off the video by talking about the steps that I took personally in the beginning of my kind of spiritual journey when I wanted to start reaching more enlightenment and figuring out what resonates with me in regards to spirituality. And then at the end of the video, I'm going to show you guys how you can incorporate them into your routine to where it takes no more than about 10 to 15 minutes of your day to start with. So make sure you stick to the end of the video to see that because all of it's going to be very helpful. Now, the first portion of the video is going to be me telling you what spirituality basically is, and I will include a timestamp right here if you would like to skip over to the actual steps and the actual routine. Without further ado, let's start talking about getting you on your path to spirituality. Let's start by talking about what exactly is spirituality. I know that it can get mixed into so many different places and it kind of becomes hard to understand what the heck it even is. So I looked at the exact definition on Google for you guys and I'll read that for you really quick. It's the quality of being concerned with the human spirit or soul as opposed to material or physical things. Now we all know that spirituality, like I said, encompasses so many different cultural, religious, ancient beliefs. Me personally, I do not practice one specific belief and that is because I really honestly find beauty, wisdom, and truth in all of the beliefs that are out there and they all have the same goal in connecting us to that higher part of ourself that we really can't explain and spirituality has been the only way for us to try and explain it or make it tangible and connect to it. But through all the different cultures that have existed in history and right at this present moment, spirituality has taken so many different forms. But the ultimate goal is, like I said, to connect to that higher self and find peace and fulfillment in your own life. My philosophy is whatever practices you find that work for you, whether that's a hybrid of Buddhism, Taoism, witchcraft, Christianity, it doesn't matter. Whatever practices that are under a certain belief that help you, then stick to that. Stick to what works. With that being said, this video is non-denominational. So you, no matter who you are, no matter where you're from, you can apply these practices to your daily life. And adding on to that, this is just my personal advice. Once again, spirituality is so dependent on you and what you feel like what works for other people doesn't work for me and what works for that person doesn't work for me. And that's okay because we're all trying to reach the same goal. So take whatever out of this video you find helps you, but if none of it helps you, I'm sorry, but I tried, you know? You just gotta find what works for you. I just want you to take out of this that it is up to you to find what works for you and this is just my personal experience and what helped me. And if you're kind of wondering like, who am I to talk? I actually come from a Catholic household growing up. I wasn't really raised closely to the church, but my family was very, because of the culture in our family, they were very adamant about being a Catholic. And for me, that spiritual path just didn't work. And it's okay if that's the same for you guys out there. Or maybe you're doing, you're watching this video because you wanna connect through the Catholic religion and that's totally fine. So we're all friends here, it's all love. Spirituality isn't about rules, regulations, or being perfect. It's just about being you and finding the right path for you. The first step that I would take if I were just beginning on my spiritual journey is reading spiritual books that help open your mind and your heart to moving onto that path to finding your higher self. I have three book recommendations for all the spiritual beginners out there who don't really know where to start. The first book is The Seven Spiritual Laws of Success by Deepak Chopra. The second book is the Miracle of Mindfulness by Thich Nhat Hanh. 
And then the third book I have is The Untethered Soul by Michael Singer. So I'm about to talk about the differences between these three and hopefully you can find one that sounds like it's a good beginner book for you. First, let's talk about the seven spiritual laws. So the reason that this book is great for beginners, if you're somebody who's usually into reading structured self-help, self-development or entrepreneurial books, then I feel like this is a great option for you just because it's kind of like a combination of that structural self-help but at the same time it starts diving into the more like metaphysical spiritual side of the world so it really helps flip your mind to a different perspective on the way to achieve happiness and success in your life that is very different from the way that we tend to be taught you know that hustle mentality stuff like that this book will blow your mind and will help make room for a new way of thinking versus that old hustle this, hustle that, do this, that way there's rules to your life, blah, blah, blah. This book will really help break you out of that mold, but still maintain structure for you to follow as well. If you're brand new to some of the more metaphysical ideas of living your life, you know, like connecting to nature and stuff like that, some of it might be a little bit like whoosh right over your head at first, but just reread it over. Nothing in it is too like far-fetched for anyone to understand, so highly recommend that. Second, we have The Miracle of Mindfulness and is written by a world-renowned Buddhist monk named Thich Nhat Hanh. The Western culture really picked up on this Buddhist idea of mindfulness and there are other Eastern beliefs as well that follow this same type of practice, but in the Western society, like I mentioned with the seven spiritual laws, we really focus a lot on hustling and thinking about the future. You know, everything we do every day, we're taught to think about the future. We go to school to invest in the future. We go to college because we are supposed to have our future figured out and know what we want to do. And if you think about that, it probably brings up anxiety <laughs> trying to think of the future, especially if you're somebody who doesn't know what you want to do in your life and things like that right? I, I know what that feels like. Mindfulness in itself is basically the act of being fully 100% aware of the present moment to take yourself out of that constant process of imagination that stresses us out, causes anxiety, causes depression, causes anger, whatever it may be. If you really have anxiety and you really have an issue with thinking about the future and the past all the time and you're kind of like go 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 all the time this is a really good book to help you slow down because when you think about it the future does not exist for you yet and the past is gone so nothing you think about now is going to change what happens only what you do now is going to change what happens you know what I'm saying? And lastly is The Untethered Soul. Now I just recently have read this book. As you can see, I have all my little bookmarks. It is such a great, great book. And honestly, I think it is such a simple read too. It's not too deep. You probably, you might have to read over a couple parts a couple times, but the actual reading of it, like the verbal usage, the grammar, the vocabulary is all very easy to grasp. So you can really focus on picking up what he's telling you without having to decipher the actual sentences, if that makes sense. Um, but this book, in comparison to the other two, focuses more on your chakras and the way that we kind of build up blockages within our internal energy throughout our life and how that ends up translating into our future and causing us to experience trauma and pain and really how that ends up affecting our entire life. And it's a really great read for those of you who may struggle with like depression, anxiety, uh, just a lot of mentally related traumas. I found that this book really helped put the cherry on top of everything I've learned thus far about opening yourself up to the present. This didn't focus as much on just the present moment, but it really focused on how to recognize your pain and recognize where that's coming from and how to deal with it moving forward. Collectively, these three books are really important to starting your spiritual journey because they help really break you out of that mold that I was talking about that society tends to put us in. So they'll help clear out the old things that are in your mind and help open your mind and your heart to all of the new practices and things you're about to learn that will really help open you up to receiving your higher self. 
these books will help do that. It'll help heal those old wounds to make room for new experiences and new things in life. The second biggest step that I would take if I was a beginner in spirituality is beginning meditation and breath work. So first, the idea of breath work is really just bringing attention back to your breath. So we breathe subconsciously all day, every day, and at night. Even though we're able to breathe subconsciously because it's a necessary thing for us to survive, we need to sometimes return our attention to it because we're actually taking shallow breaths throughout the day. We're not taking actually deep, fulfilling, nutritious breaths because breaths are truly nutritious for us. The idea of breath work is really just taking moments throughout your day to take at least one really deep breath and you can train yourself to find triggers for this whether it's you know the moment you wake up your alarm tells you take three deep breaths that's breath work it's drawing attention back to your breath and using that to help clear your mind and calm yourself and bring you back to center meditation though sounds so daunting to so many people and i understand why it does seem daunting at first and i'm someone whose mind moves a million thoughts a minute and I was like, how am I gonna sit there, you know? But first I came to discover that there are so many different types of meditations out there for all different types of people. So you really just have to be patient and find the one that suits you the most. I started with five minute guided meditations and the guided ones help give me structure to focus on versus just sitting there with myself not knowing what to do. Meditation seems daunting, but honestly it is like the biggest part of my practice that has changed everything for me and there's a reason that it's become so popular and there's a reason that so many spiritual people recommend meditation and so many business people recommend it too. I will once again talk about how to incorporate these things into your daily routine at the end of the video so be sure you're staying tuned for that. It really helped bridge the gap between my brain and my my soul like that higher self. Your mind's thoughts kind of get in the way of that connection and meditation helps you create that bridge and build that relationship with your higher consciousness. Before we continue, let's take one deep breath together to make sure that you guys are still with me. So when I say three, take a deep breath in and then release, okay? One, two, three. All right, are you still with me? Okay, now get up, stretch, because we still have like at least, at least 10 more minutes of this video. So be sure before we continue that you are liking, subscribing, and hitting the bell so you don't forget along our way. And leave a comment down below what you currently do or what you're most excited to do in your spiritual practice. All right, my third step for spiritual beginners is getting into the habit of journaling for gratitude and mental clarity. I know, I know you are probably so tired of hearing about journaling, but when you hear about these things a lot, there's a reason for it. I promise, I promise. You might be wondering, well, yeah, journaling may sound great, but how does it connect to spirituality? First, we'll start with journaling for gratitude. So journaling for gratitude is just basically taking a few minutes of your day to sit down with your little notepad, journal, piece of paper, whatever you have available to you, and just writing down a list of things that you're grateful for. And just like we talked about previously in the other steps, coming back to the present moment, coming back to your center, and also connecting to your subconscious and your higher consciousness, um, journaling for gratitude will bring you back to that as well because it will really make you, force you to focus on the things to be grateful for in this moment to once again pull you out of that black hole of the future and the past and worrying about both of them. It could be just writing, you know, I'm grateful for my dog. I'm grateful for my headphones. I'm grateful to be breathing. I'm grateful to be able to see and watch this video. I'm grateful to be able to read these really good books. You know, whatever it might be, there are a multitude. There are so much more things to be grateful for than you pay attention to on a daily basis. So making this a daily practice will force you to 
Write those things down, focus on them, and in doing that, you'll subconsciously raise your vibration and be even more ready to meditate, receive the information that these books are telling you, and so on and so forth. Then there's journaling for mental clarity. When you're journaling for mental clarity, it's like having your own therapeutic rant session with your journal, you know? <laughs> Basically, when you journal for mental clarity, all you're going to do is just brain dump into your journal. What ever happened that day that just stressed you out, whatever made you happy, whatever made you mad, sad, whatever you're feeling, there's no filter. The grammar, punctuation, spelling, sentence structure, none of that matters when you're journaling for mental clarity. None of it matters. It's just you and your journal and you mind dumping whatever is going through your head. We have a trillion thoughts go through our head constantly all the time just from me starting this video and you watching all the way through it you probably had a million thoughts go through your head that you're not even fully conscious of and it's really crazy that we allow all of these thoughts to accumulate in our heads and essentially form a massive tumbleweed in our head that desperately needs to be untangled and taken out being able to rant to your journal will help give some organization to these thoughts. It'll put these thoughts in physical form in some way. So that way it's slowly but surely helping weed them out of your mind and help uh, once again, open your mind to make room for all of the new, more high vibration information and practices that you're going to be doing and receiving. Now the bonus step for those of you who are interested in it is astrology and tarot and how I started incorporating those into my practice to really connect me back to my intuition and my subconscious and my higher self. And if you're not interested in hearing about these, that is totally fine. I know it's not for everybody. So again, there are timestamps in the description that you can follow if you'd like to skip ahead to how I incorporate these steps into my routine and how you can do it too. But for those of you who are interested in sticking around, let's talk about how I incorporate astrology and tarot. Let's start with astrology. So astrology has really helped me connect to myself on a much more intimate level because once you really learn, I mean, you don't even have to dive as deep as I do into the birth chart and stuff, even though that is amazing for getting to know yourself. But really, if you can just know your sun sign and moon sign, or if you can even know your rising sun and moon sign, you will learn so much more about yourself and the way that you function. And the more that you know about yourself and the more that you are conscious of your strengths, weaknesses, struggles, um, accomplishments, so on and so forth, the more that you're aware of all that, the more that you can consciously work with it instead of being frustrated because you don't know why you can't ever do that or you don't know why you can do this but not that so on and so forth all the millions of insecure thoughts that we have astrology helped kind of diminish a lot of them for me or recognize when they appear and know how to work around them or with them what i do to incorporate astrology is i started tracking the moon cycle in accordance with my sun moon and rising sign mainly my sun and moon sign so the app that i use i'll leave like a little recording of it right here so you can kind of look at some of the features that it has um it's a really great app for helping you track the moon cycle and for me, it gives you like, if you know your sun and all that, it gives you a little horoscope for your sun sign. And it kind of just helps me recognize the energy that I might be dealing with every day. Not saying that the horoscopes they give you are set in stone, they're not, but it does help me kind of recognize the energy of the day. And the moon cycle does as well, because every phase of the moon works with all of us differently based on what phase it's in every single day. And if you want to know a little bit more on the moon cycle and the moon signs and everything, I have a video on it right here. Um, there will be a card and a link in the description. But for now, that's how I've incorporated it into working with my energy every day is keeping track of the moon cycle in accordance with my sun sign. As for tarot, I literally had just ordered a tarot deck and I decided to start pulling like a daily card and then um, trying to see if I can 
relate it back to myself, but then looking it up if I don't really fully understand what it might mean for me. I highly recommend doing that if you're not opposed to astrology and tarot because tarot is another thing that helps really align me with the energy of my day or what might be going on subconsciously that I'm not paying attention to. And once again, astrology and tarot really help connect you to that intuition and that subconscious mind, but especially tarot. Astrology is more of a tangible thing where it really tells you how you are and the things that you're good at, the things that you might struggle with, so on and so forth. But tarot actually really is a direct message from your subconscious mind. If I might, in the back of my head, be thinking like, dreading I'm dreading something or I might be thinking that my energy's off or whatever it is as crazy as it sounds you might think that you should be able to recognize that on your own but it actually helps reach a different state of mental clarity and comfortability when you pull a tarot card and the tarot card tells you like yeah you might be dreading so and so today and your energy is a little negative but then it offers ways that you can work with that energy too and it's just a very positive way to once again enhance working with yourself so you can be the most successful version of yourself, happiest version, peaceful, whatever your goal is. All right, now let's talk about how you can incorporate these all into your daily routine. And it will only take about 10 to 20 minutes total, depending on what you do. The first thing I would do is as soon as I wake up in the morning, I would take three deep breaths. And if you need to, I would, you know, label my alarm morning three breaths or whatever it is and as soon as it goes off and i look at it i will sit up and i will just take those three deep good breaths before getting out of bed so that's the way that you can incorporate breath work and that will take no more than one minute in the morning and after using the restroom and whatnot immediately get your journal out and write five things in the present moment that you are grateful for just five things just start with that and you can work your way up in the future and this will take you no more than two to three minutes i know because i did it a lot and it really only takes me a few minutes to do it in the morning but you know i highly recommend making time for this in the morning because again it is so short and it will really help start off your day the right way even if it's 5 a.m I would still recommend doing this in the morning so that way you can start in the right mindset. The third thing I would do after I journal is I would follow a five minute guided meditation for positivity or gratitude or you know maybe you need a calming meditation because you have a little of anxiety in the morning whatever it is but for me personally i would do a five minute guided meditation of gratitude and positivity and this only takes five minutes so that puts us at about nine minutes total so far <laughs> just about nine to ten minutes the fourth step after meditating is optional but for those of you who want to incorporate astrology and tarot what I do is I'll read my moon app. I'll kind of assess the energy of the day after I do my meditation. And then I'll pull one tarot card because sometimes depending on what the moon app said, um, it will encourage or inspire a question that I wanna ask the tarot cards. I will pull one tarot card, then I'll pull out my little journal that I use for tarot and I'll write what I think the card means to me and if needed, I will look it up if I need further clarification. And this usually takes me around five, maybe to 10 minutes, depending on how deep of a message the card has for me. Number five, the last thing to do would be to read your spiritual book for at least five minutes in the morning. Once again, to keep your mindset in that really high vibration, positive, peaceful state. Open yourself to receiving positivity rather than negativity in the day, kind of raising yourself above all that negativity that we encounter every single day. And all of that total literally only takes like 10 to 20 minutes. And if you can't do all of this in the morning and you can only do maybe a piece of it, you can still do a bunch of it at night. That leads me into number six. Number six is doing the journaling for mental clarity at nighttime. And the reason that I added this one to 
your nighttime routine rather than morning is because you know you don't really have much to vent about in the morning you may but not usually so when you go throughout your day and then tons of things happen every day that might frustrate you or whatever it is then that gives you an outlet at the end of the day before you go to bed so you can once again go to bed with a peaceful happy subconscious mind because if you let all those thoughts run through your head and go to bed then it's just going to give you bad dreams make you not be able to sleep you might wake up in that negative vibration and it's just it's all a domino effect the positive things you do every day even the little things are a domino effect just like the negative things that is how i would incorporate them all together into a daily routine i really hope that you can take something that you enjoyed and that you really resonated with out of this video i really enjoyed making it because this changed everything for me it literally changed everything if you're excited to incorporate any of this into your own routine leave a comment down below about if you're going to do all of them or what specific step you're going to follow and also let me know what inspired you to start on your spiritual journey and once again be sure to like and subscribe if you haven't already as well as hit the bell. Last but not least, be sure that you head over to the Blue Lotus Facebook community if you want to see more about astrology, spirituality, and self-transformation. If you haven't already, be sure that you also watch these videos because they will teach you so much more about astrology and I will have future spirituality videos coming out as well, but right now I'm doing seasonal zodiac videos, so look out for those. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Adios!